Today we're going to be looking at installing one of these Bluetooth modules in a car. I've already installed one in my Mazda 3 here. We're going to be installing this one in my Mazda 5. These, I, I love the one that I've installed in here. They cost 4 to $5 on eBay and they do so much. Let's have a look at the one that I've already installed. So first let me tell you about my previous setup. So both my cars come with an auxiliary plug. Uh, this one is inside the console here. So originally I hooked up my phone to this auxiliary plug. Then I, I hated having the wire going to my phone like that. So I bought one of these on uh, eBay, or not, I bought it on Amazon, but you can get them on eBay. I bought this for 10 bucks and it's a Bluetooth receiver. And I plug into the auxiliary there and it syncs with my phone and then I can uh, play music through there. The problem with this is that it's it's battery powered and it would last about a week before I had to charge it But then I had to take it out of my car and go and charge it and it kind of died like without much warning um, And if I tried to plug it into my cigarette outlet the, it, it would there would be interference and it would sound all stacky So I was constantly having to charge this so then when I saw one of these online I thought hey for four bucks. Let's give it a try if it doesn't work. It doesn't work Well, I mounted mine in my dash right here uh, and it's working great. So let me give you a demonstration on how this works. Sorry if this is a little wobbly. The best way for me to get the shot is handheld. But for four or five dollars, this device does multiple things. I can sync my phone with it through Bluetooth or pair it through Bluetooth. I can use this auxiliary plug to plug in. So it gives me an auxiliary plug. It has a micro SD card so I can play music off that. And then I also have a USB plug, which is great because you can play music off USB drives. It also has an FM radio built in, which doesn't really matter because I already have an FM radio in my car, but it's nice to have that option. Now, let me show you. It remembers, it when you turn it off the car, when you turn it back on, it starts playing at the beginning of the last song you were on. So it goes back to the beginning of the song, but it remembers what song you're on. So let me turn the power on here, and you'll see it will start playing my music. So what's great about this is I have my music on the SD card all the time, and then my wife and kids can have their own flash drives they plug in. So I turn this on, and it will say music. music. And it starts playing my music. Then I can take a flash drive. If my wife gets in the car, she just plugs in her flash drive, and it starts playing music there. If I pull it out, it starts picking up right where it left off on the other song. Again, I can put her song in, and it starts playing. I can grab another flash drive, plug it in, and this is my daughter's educational uh, USB drive. So, as you can see, it's very simple for us to switch through. We can each have different flash drives, and these are full-size flash drives that I have right here, but we can use mini flash drives too, and it's great. And then I can use these controls here, but the device also comes with a remote control. So you get this device and a remote control with the battery for $4 and change. Now I do want to note when you're ordering these, they come from what I've seen in 5 volt and 12 volt models. Um, and of course for a car you want 12 volts because that's what your car is running off of, otherwise you're going to have to get a converter. Now I, I don't know, possibly they could be the same devices and maybe they work in a range from both. Um, when I ordered this one, I made sure it said it was 12 volts. And this one, the, the front looks exactly like the one I already have, but the board is slightly different. In fact, it, ha it has an extra option where mine has a uh, the output, it also has a plug for an extra input on the back too, which is pretty neat. But nowhere on it does it say whether it's a 12 volt or a 5 volt. So before I even start working on the car, I'm going to hook it up here on my desk to 12 volts and make sure it works. But when you're ordering it, make sure you order the proper version for you. If you're working in a car, you're going to want to get the 12 volts. You could also, I've seen people put these and just use them as little base units, build a wood box with a speaker in it, and in which case you probably only want the 5 volts because then you can power it off uh, an Arduino or something You know, if you wanted to have some other type of controls with it. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up. Also, the uh, the remote is slightly different. It has a few different buttons, but it's basically the same options. And this one came with some thicker wires. Let me show you this here because the ones on the original one, they were like hair thin inside and very hard to work with. These ones are a little thicker. And unlike that one where I was trying to hook everything up in the car, I'm going to put some extenders on this right here on the desk side of them and, and crimp them down. Um, before I start even working in the car because that was the hardest part was just trying to get these little wires all connected in the car. 
So you can see that these are pretty small wires to begin with. The other ones were like a quarter this size. I mean, literally they were like little hairs and very hard to work with, very hard to strip when I needed to strip them. So again, first thing I'm gonna do is test the unit and then I am going to put on extension wires to this. Okay, I have it hooked up to 12 volts here. I'm gonna plug the power in and let's see if we get Oh, screen came right on and it went to the auxiliary input. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is hook up either uh, some headphones or some speakers, whatever I find around here in my garage, and make sure I get some audio coming out of that. Okay, so let me explain this. So I've got a speaker here. I cut the wire and spliced it. There's Whenever you have a speaker or headphones, you're always going to have two wires to each speaker. One's going to be ground, one's going to be your, your positive for the, the audio. And uh, on our input on the plug, or the output, so we have an input on this one and an output. My other one only has the output. Uh, you have two colored wires. One is your left speaker, one is your right speaker, and a ground. So I uh, used alligator clips to hook up to this speaker here. And now in the car, we're going to be using the stereo that's already in the car, and we're going to be using its amplifier. So uh, we're going to see if this works, uh, and we hopefully will get audio out of this. It may not be very loud, but let's go ahead and hook the power up. So I just need to connect the ground here. There we go, it came on, and it starts playing. There we go, it says USB, and it says it's playing an MP3. And I don't know if you'll hear that. I don't know exactly where the speaker, maybe that's, or microphone there. So hopefully you could hear that. It is playing audio, so we are good. This unit is working on 12 volts and we're getting output. Just to be sure, I could always check the other speaker just by the other output. So like the left output's working, now I'm checking the right. Uh, reconnect this and I'll listen to this. Yep, and it's playing. So we know the device works. So now I'm just gonna start connecting extension wires onto this. So before I start putting on those extension wires, let me explain a little bit more about how we're gonna hook this up in the car. Now let me also say, I know very little about stereo systems and car wiring and stuff. So it took me a couple of days on the first car to figure out how to do this. And it's actually really simple, uh, at least with my setup. And one of the, uh, the things about the reviews, when you look at the reviews on this little device, and you get this device off of uh, Amazon as well, but it's quite a bit more expensive. And uh, But if you read the reviews there, most of the reviews say either it's great or I have no clue how to hook this thing up because there's no directions because it doesn't come with any paperwork. It just comes with the remote and the device with a few little wires. So. Uh, the way that I ended up hooking it up, as I said earlier, both my cars have auxiliary plugs. Well, both auxiliary plugs go to the back of the radio with a plug like this. Um, so what I did was I went on uh, eBay, and for $2, I bought a new uh, auxiliary cable. So it has the right plug, and uh, you can get them with either male or female. It doesn't really matter because we're going to cut this off. So what's going to happen is this is going to plug in the back of the radio, and this will plug in to our device the output audio so it will go into our radio and we'll use the amplifier and then all I have to do is select auxiliary on my radio to choose this device. Now, I want to point out, again, I know very little about car radios. The little bit I know is if you watch my videos from five, six years ago when I first started doing videos, I had a computer in my car for a while uh, with a little touch screen that came out and stuff and I had a friend uh, help me hook that all up. And at that point, we had to buy an amplifier because if we hooked the computer directly into the speaker lines, it was like this speaker here we were just testing. It was very, very low. You needed that amplifier to amplify the sound. Well, since I'm going in the auxiliary uh, port on the back of my radio, uh, I don't have to worry about that because the radio already has a built-in amplifier. Now, um, another thing I want to say is, if we look at this wire, let me show you this wire. So looking at this wire, you can see there, there are five wires in there. Uh, you got a white one, a yellow one, two blacks, and a red. Now when I originally was going to hook this up, I thought, okay, we got left channel, right channel, a ground for both of those, and then we have positive and ground that I can pull from the radio. Well, when we actually cut this wire open, you'll see that there's only three wires inside. I, I really don't know where the other wire is going. I don't know if it's looping back to signal that there is an auxiliary plug or something, but there's only three wires in here, left and right speakers and a ground, so we have to pull our power from someplace else. Now from working on this project and reading up online, I found there's lots of places, with this, hundreds of wires in your car that you can pull 12 volts from and you just clip into them. Um, 
But one thing you want to make sure is one that you're choosing one that turns off when the car turns off. Because you don't want this running and draining your battery when your car is off. Now, uh, one way to do that is in your steering column by your ignition switch there will be a wire that turns on when the car turns on. Uh, so your starter wire there. In my car I found that uh, the uh, cigarette outlet, the 12 volt outlet in the car, in my particular car here, turns off when I turn off the car. I used to have a Ford and it stayed on even when the car was off. But since mine turns off, I'm able to connect to that and that's right below the radio, so that's easier for me to get to. So what I, again, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this wire and hook it up to the left and right channel and the ground for the speakers and then I have other wires I'm going to strip and extend for the power that I will then use what's called, what are called scotch locks to clip into the power from the cigarette outlet. And scotch locks, as you'll see me use them, are great. I don't have to strip any wires. I just, just shove the wires in there and clip it down and it clamps into the wire, as you'll see. And they are great because not only have I had done this project recently, I recently put a backup camera in my car, which I may do a video on when I do it for my second car and they, they make things a lot easier. Instead of trying to cut and splice wires in your car, you just clamp into them. So let's go ahead and put on these extensions. there was I soldered all the connections and then I wrapped them in electrical tape. Uh, you could probably use crimps but with these small wires I don't trust them I don't want them coming loose. You don't want to use wire nuts in a car because the car vibrates and they can come loose. If for some reason you do make sure you put a lot of electrical tape on there because you don't want anything shorting out. So the next part is taking apart the dash in my car to get the radio out which I've done a lot in my Mazda 3. I've done it once or twice in the Mazda 5 but it's been a while. So let's see if I can figure it out without looking up directions online. Am I in focus? No, now I am. Hi. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you know, a lot of pulling a car, cars, cars apart is just popping stuff apart. Uh, my Mazda 3, I start with a trim. I pull a piece of trim off from over the glove box to here. When I pull it off, I remove two screws, and that moves out, and then I move two more screws, and, the, uh, and that's it, and it comes apart. This one, I think I start down here, and I'm not going to go into detail because it's going to be different for each car, so just look up your model of car, how to remove the radio. Uh, but here I go, I got a, a screwdriver and a socket wrench, because uh, I'll probably need those at some point, and my multimeter, because I just want to double check that this 12-volt uh, uh, outlet here actually turns off when the car turns off. I'm pretty sure I've tested it before, but before we make things permanent, let's do that. So let's go ahead and start working on this. Twenty DC. Plug this in here, and here. And I'm getting no voltage there. And let's turn the key. And we got 12 volts. So turn it off, and it goes off again. So we're good there. having to remove a few bolts and few screws. I have one of these, I suggest getting one, you get them on Amazon. It's a little magnetic thing for your belt. Uh, it's called a mag sheet. And it's great for when you're working like this, you just drop the screws and stuff right there. And uh, you don't have to worry about where they are when it's time to put the screws back. Although if you're like me, you're only gonna put half the screws back. So next time you do this, you don't have to take them all out again. There we go. And 
this is the plug. So, I don't know if you can see that. You've got all these cables here, but then you've got your auxiliary plug over here. And that's the one that we already bought the connector for. Alright, bought the connector for. So let me go ahead and get all our stuff and test it before we start mounting stuff. Actually, while we're here, uh, two more screws. This uh, popped out with the little screen here. I got two wires that I'll unplug. And then I have all this empty space, and that's where I'm going to be putting my uh, screen. So I'm going to go drill this hole now. And this is something I don't want to mess up, because if I do, I'm going to have a hole in my car, an ugly hole in my dash forever. So these here are called scotch locks, and the way these work is, I slide in my new wire in here, and then I feed the existing wire through here, and I clamp it down with a pair of pliers. And I have two of these, really the red is probably the best size for what I'm doing here, but I only have one of those left, so I'm going to have to use a blue one here. It should still work, I'm going to use that for the ground, uh, but yeah, I'm going to clamp these into the power down by my 12 volt outlet in my car. And so let's go do that. Okay, so here is my outlet. I got a black wire, which is my ground. In this case, my, my uh, positive is a blue wire. Uh, the wire I ran is green for my positive and white for my ground. Uh, and that's just the wires I picked to hook up to the um, Bluetooth device. Uh, I was actually thinking, I am going to put it in here, but really ground, you can ground anywhere. So I could have grounded at some bolt up top. I could have, should have, could have only run one wire if I wanted to. Uh, so the way this works is, you'll notice, again, there's two slots, but on one side and only one on the other. I slide my new wire into here. I don't need to strip or anything. And I just inline the old wire like so. And what happens now is now I'm going to grab some pliers and I'm going to squeeze down on that and it will crimp into that to both wires and connect them. I don't have to strip anything. It makes it nice and simple. So where are my pliers? Right here. Just make sure they're in there all the way. They didn't back out while I was moving around. And go ahead and crimp that down really nice and tight. And we should have a good connection now. And there I did the ground. So I get a little, just a little tug just to make sure they all clamped in and we should be good to go. We should have power at the other end of the wire. And now we just plug our device into the power and we plug it into our uh, radio and we should be able to turn it on and get some sound. Okay, I got the power plugged in. Let me plug the auxiliary plug. Well, unplug the old auxiliary plug and then uh, turn on the car and see if we got some sound. And again, as I said towards the beginning of the video, I'm kind of going over this, but I'm not saying I know what I'm doing. So do this at your own risk. You know, ask someone you know who knows about car stereos, but I wanted to give you, uh, am I like a silhouette? Can you see me okay? Um, I'm going by based on what I know and what works with what I know. And now for the moment of truth. I should probably get something that has some music on it. I'll be right back. Now, the moment of truth. I got this USB drive. It's got um, uh, my daughter's. It's just going to be a lady skip counting. She's going to be counting by twos. I'm going to put that in and turn on the power. 16, 18, 20, 22, and... Well, it's working. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. The other one has a lady's voice that goes, music, when you turn it on. And when you turn to Bluetooth, she goes, a Bluetooth. Um, but, uh, like I said, it's a slightly different board, but it's working. So, uh, that is it. Now I just need to put everything back together. Okay, so, thought everything was working. Then I realized this music was only playing out of the right speaker. And I realized I made a mistake when I soldered the wires together. The plug, the auxiliary plug that I bought for my car, and it may be different for yours, the red plug is not the right speaker, that's the ground. Uh, the white 
wire is the right speaker. Uh, and that, or no, yeah, the yellow is the, the right speaker, the white seems to be the left. And also, uh, right now it's working. I have lowered down, but um, I don't have the ground connected. I'm still going to connect it because it's there, but it seems to be working without the ground. But I'm assuming it's there for a reason. So, uh, earlier I need to go back inside and re-solder these to the proper wires, but I just had the, uh, the colors mixed up because they're, they, I, for some reason I just thought white was going to be ground, but no, the, the red is ground. I should have known that since the other end of the plug, uh, the red is wrapped around the black wire. So, now everything's working. I'm going to go solder these wires again and then uh, put everything back together. So I got most of my dash back together. A few things I want to comment on. So I soldered my wires together and then I wrapped them in a little bit of electrical tape. Uh, if you have heat shrink tubing, that probably would be a better option. Also, I mentioned in this particular car, when I was taking this apart, there was a plug here that I had to unplug to get the, uh, the dash out. I wasn't sure what it was. I'm pretty sure that goes to the rear um, controls for the uh, rear air conditioning. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, just again, you want to check and make sure everything works before you put everything back together. I still have this running. 16, 18, 12. So, yeah, and in my other car, I and in this car, I think that the audio sounds better than that little Bluetooth device that I had. Um, I guess maybe it's just getting better power rather than using a small battery. Um, snap and stuff. Again, when it comes to a car, my view is, you know, Pull on it until it pops off. If you pull real hard and it's not coming off, look for a screw or a bolt. If that doesn't, if you can't find one, pull harder. Okay, as I was saying before, the battery died on my camera. Um, all done, audio's working. Uh, things that I'd like to add to this project is I have a few of these. Um, I bought a bunch of cheap USB wall outlets from China that ended up being defective. I got my money back. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, pop these things apart one or two of them, and pull out the USB port and somehow mount those somewhere in the dash of my computer. Not hooked to anything, but just to have a place to store our extra USB drive. So again, I have one, you know, the main music on the SD card, but then have other USB drives that are plugged into the dash that you pull out and plug in when you want. So that's something I might play around with. Again, um, heat shrink tubing uh, is probably a good idea. Um, but the electrical tape is just so that they don't touch. The soldering holds them together. And, um, yeah, and again, you know, this is like an overview of how I did it. Uh, so talk to someone who knows about car stereos before doing something like this. They might have better ways or know things that you should do that I, I didn't or things that you shouldn't do that I did. Um, if you do like this, if you did like this video, you know, I have lots of videos, uh, not just on you know, stuff like this. Most of my videos on this channel are on like little electronics and stuff. So if you like that sort of thing, think about subscribing. If you like my videos and watch them regularly, think about supporting over at patreon.com or if you go to filmsbychris.com, which is my website, there should be a link in the description. It's Chris with a K. There you can search through all my videos from this channel and my other channel, which is mainly on software. And there you can also support me. Uh, there's a button to go to my Patreon page and also pay uh, a one-time donation through PayPal if you like my videos. If you can't support me financially, think about supporting me by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the other videos. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.